Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Christensen. Welcome to Horror 101 with Dr. AC, and this is Scarathon 2023, benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. Today, we're going to be talking about shark exploitation, all the shark movies, and we have an awesome panel of guests. Let's bring everybody in, and we will talk with John Kitley, Larry Sternshein, and Kevin Matthews beaming in all the way across the ocean from the UK to talk about shark exploitation, an awesome documentary that is streaming now on Shudder. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming on the show. Glad to be here. <laughs> Everyone else is not quite so sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might be glad, not maybe not so glad. Sorry, Larry, I'm un uh, unmute yourself. Oh, that explains why it doesn't sound there. like I'm enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded supremely unenthusiastic. I'm not even going to talk I'm, about this movie. I'm pumped. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's talk about sharks. Let us talk about sharks. I actually came late to the shark game because I didn't get to see Jaws until I was probably like, you know, 16 or 17. Uh, so it was it was not. Uh, I, it came out in 75. And that kind of, you know, sparked the the shark craze. Let's talk about Jaws and then let's talk about the documentary. Uh, Kevin? For Jaws, for me, I have a very fond memory. I think it's a very British specific thing. My uncle had recorded it off the TV late one night. And on one of these showings, we used to have a weatherman on TV called Michael Fish. So <laughs> Michael Fish had presented the weather. And then it was, here's the feature presentation for tonight, Jaws. So that was a great uh, minor double bill gag. And <laughs> and from my very first viewing, I was impressed, terrified. Uh, you know, you don't get many sharks going about the uh, waters of Edinburgh or any of the cold areas of Scotland. But that did not convince me. Uh, you know, <laughs> there was no science or actual facts that were going to make me sure there were no sharks in the water around there. Traumatized Larry? for life. Larry, yeah. what do we you? Well, for me, when people ask what's your favorite horror movie of all time, I usually go with Jaws because you got to pick a movie and stick with it because that question's almost impossible. But uh, it, for Truly, though, it's a, a movie that was uh, formative for me. Uh, I remember I would go to the library with my dad and I'd rent like War of the Worlds and stuff like that. And I was, my sister went to go see Jaws 3D and I really wanted to see, see it. They told me no, but they let me watch the movie from the library and it scared the crap out of me. But I was like, but amused and amazed by it. And then I would always rent it. And every other time I'd rent it, I couldn't finish it. So I'd be <laughs> like, I'm brave this time, but this week I'm too, too scared. And so it's always been like a part of my movie journey. So that's when you were talking about this doc and I was really excited to watch the doc because I love shark movies in general that uh, I had to jump on board just because of how important Jaws was for me and, you know, all the great shark movies and bad shark movies we've gotten. Well, it's important to jump on board because you don't want to jump off board because the <laughs> sharks are in the water. Yes. John? True. Um, I saw Jaws on a re-release. I think it was in 77, and it terrified me to this day. Uh, I have not been in the water since and refused to go. And with later movies like Piranha and stuff, it wasn't just the ocean. It was... <laughs> any body of water and i'm not afraid of the water i just it's what's in the water uh so jaws had a literally a terrifying effect to me i love the film and i can still watch it today but i really have to separate myself because if i let myself it will still bother me and there's still parts of the film that even just thinking about it will trigger raising the hair and the goosebumps and stuff and and it's that good of a movie that it it makes that much of an impact over and over and over again. And anybody who hasn't uh, picked up John's book, Discover the Horror, you have like a really nice kind of chapter on yeah. your, your discovery with the, or your encounter with Jaws for the first time. Yep. I, I, I've often described Jaws, I think one of the reasons it works so well is that it is so well grounded in the storytelling. You know, the special effects are, you know, hidden <laughs> almost. It's like you try and keep keep those special effects off to the side because the fam famously the the shark was not always working as it should have. And I didn't realize that Joe Alvis, who created the shark, was the one who directed Jaws 3D. Yeah, and I was like, ah, oh, okay. And, and uh, 
I learned a ton of stuff during the course of this, this documentary. I would just say that I think that's one of the scarier parts of Jaws is the stuff not with the shark. I mean, right. the whole Indianapolis story is still terrifying to listen to, but it's the lead up to the situations with the shark, for at least for me, that starts to get you on edge before you even get the action with the shark. Just seeing it swimming in the water is still effective. And Kevin, where did you see this shark exploitation documentary? Was it at a festival or did you see it online? Uh, no, I saw it on Shudder here in the okay. UK as well, as soon as it appeared. And I'd been aware of Steven Scarlatta from his work on the, I think he was producer on the uh, Jodorowsky's June documentary. Oh, wow. And, okay. uh, and one or two other features. And he is online friend of friends of mine. Uh, so his name was known, and uh, he's a good dude, and saw his name attached to this, so rushed to see it. It's a great, it's a great documentary, and I really like uh, how they kind of they have this fun timeline. Yeah. That <laughs> instead of playing chronologically, you know, they really do zip back and forth, and you see things, and you're like, wait, we're going to talk. Oh, okay, we're not going to talk about that now, but I know you're going to talk about it eventually. Yeah, uh, I have to say, I've watched a lot of movie documentaries, and there's like really good ones, like not quite Hollywood and this one. There's some really bad ones I've seen. It's I, I think it's there's like this weird uh, thing that they have to do when making a movie. They have to make it informative enough for someone who has no idea about any of this while also making it entertaining enough for people who know all about this. Right. And uh, the really good ones do that. And I thought this one did it well, too, especially by bringing in like the scientists and stuff like that. That, yeah. you know. Like even if you know all these horror movies, you may not know the science. So that that was my favorite part of the whole thing. Pretty smart. Yeah. I did like the fact that they they showed how to with these biologists that these films were demonizing sharks and that people were literally going out and slaughtering them because they were scared of them. Right. And while I am terrified of them, I just made the easy choice of just not going <laughs> where they live. So I'm all fine with them living there. I'm just not going to go there. Right. But it is funny how movies can have that effect on general, the general public that, oh, we need to get rid of all these and not really think of what the downstream effect of that is. No pun intended. Hey, <laughs> uh, yeah. The idea of, you know, if you kill off all the, sh like they thought they were performing a public service by killing yeah. off the, you know, these, these murderers, they're just marauding out there. And I, I, I have to think back to the Randy felt face, comedy routine where he's like no no the ocean is their bit yeah. <laughs> all this all this land here where your feet you know where you've evolved to walk around that's your bit the ocean is their bit and if you go out in their bit you're going to get bit uh i loved hearing like like thalassophobia is the the fear of water and they talked about kind of like the origins of people's fear of sharks but i also love the fact that like they got back all the way to like the polynesian legends of like the shark god and like how the, you know they really are revered in certain cultures and and it's fun to have them both be god and demon at the same time you know they're they're powerful but also they are deserving of our respect and and that kind of goes to your point larry about the idea of talking with the scientists who are like you know like they jaws you know helped make a lot of these people excited about becoming marine biologists like it, it's what got them literally in the water that was actually almost me once when i was a kid i said hey dad i want to be a marine biologist but then i realized how afraid i i really actually am of, <laughs> of, of, of you know i was in a lake once and i was like looking around for the fin like there's no chance there's a shark here but back in my head there was like was that a fin like to this day <laughs> You know, but the people who saw that movie and they went for it, I mean, huge respect to those people, especially all the good work they do. Yeah. I, I was most impressed by the woman who was given extra enthusiasm after her terrifying tuna fishing encounter. <laughs> right. And that was that was as bad as anything in the movies. I would have been away back to the driest of dry lands forever. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. when they showed that picture, it was just like it had been sliced with a knife. You know, it's like yeah. it, there wasn't it wasn't like shredded. It was just like I was like, oh, OK, you know, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with with a razor, a mouthful of razors. Have fun. Yeah, that that woman was the Matt Hooper of that doc. 
Like that's literally <laughs> like a Matt Hooper story. It was pretty great. They found the Matt Hooper. Uh, I also like the fact that we have um, kind of lead in to Jaws where they talk about treasure hunting movies, you know, and kind of you these these adventure movies of the 50s and 60s where people would get into the water and you would see that underwater photography of sharks. But it wasn't like sharks didn't become like the terrifying thing that they were until Jaws came along. But I also like the fact that the documentary talks about kind of using the Jaws template for so many other things like Grizzly, like oh, yeah. the car. You know, it's like all we got to do is present this horrible thing that's out in the world and it's an unstoppable force. It's kind of like, huh, wait a minute. That could translate to so many things that have become subgenres sub unto themselves. Even backing up one, Duel was before Jaws, right. right? And that's the similar theme. And directed by the same, same guy. guy. Yeah. Dang it. <clears throat> I will say that I, I the, the title of this fits perfectly because it's not. And that's one of the things that I, I don't want to say I didn't like about it, but I had issues with it because it is exploitation. And when they talked about, and I don't remember the name of the film where they had an actual shark attack footage where the guy oh, right. eventually died and they use that, right. that's pure exploitation. And then later on, when we get into these incredibly low budget, damn near animated films, like the shark exorcist and the sand sharks. I'm seeing these, this footage. Cause I stayed away from like shark uh, NATO and all those. Cause what it is, but watching these and even going, Oh my God, this is even worse looking than what I <laughs> thought it would be. But again, that's what exploitation is. They are taking this element and exploiting it. Right. But it, it did give me an idea that there is no way in hell I'm wasting my time watching half of those movies. <laughs> well, they call it, I mean, they call it, I mean, basically it's like, here's another shark movie. And if you like shark movies, that's what you're drawn to. It's not the stars. It's not the director. No. It's not, you know, it's like, there's this element. And that is, right. as you said, John, that's, that's what exploitation is. You're exploiting an element. And it's like, right. okay, here's the next you know, slasher, here's the next shark movie, here's the next whatever. Except there's no sharks in those movies either. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what was it, Mark Polonia is the, the director's name? Who makes, yeah. like, all those, like, he does it, like, he has, like, 30 extra uh, Animaville movies and stuff. And uh, it's it's one of the, it's one of those kind of cool things in a sense that, like, you know, we, we talk about how anyone could go out and make their movie, you know, and... I don't know if that's good or bad sometimes, but <laughs> I, I appreciate the guy's hustle. Like he has made a, a career out of making these movies that a lot of people surprisingly really enjoy. And I think it's it's so interesting to see how they went from Jaws to yeah. Exorcist Shark and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's well, it's kind of like it's kind of like H. G. Lewis, you know, he like he never he's like, Who's who's the worst? You know, like I'm I'm making these crap movies, but you're the ones coming to see it, so you know. <laughs> Who's, yeah. who's to blame here? <laughs> well, unlike you guys, uh, I'm actually masochistic enough to watch quite a few of them. So I <laughs> have seen uh, the likes of Shark Exorcist and Cocaine Shark was the other one. Um, but this documentary, uh, with the likes of Mark Bologna and the others who churn some of those films out for Sci-Fi Channel and what have you, it kind of did give me a little bit more respect for them and that they had self-awareness of of what they're putting right. out there with very yeah. limited resources and they were going on the brand of there's a shark even if it's just in the title <laughs> and i did appreciate you know they weren't being there were some silly clips but they weren't necessarily being mocked they were showing this is what people respond to and right. we keep putting that out all the time and i've seen far too many of them so that's yeah. I I I remember John John programmed um, Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus for one of our Turkey Day marathons, based purely on that clip of the shark jumping up and you know coming at the the window of the airliner, and we're like, okay, how bad could it be? Answer: pretty bad actually. Uh, but apparently, that's like one of the better ones of these. Yeah. 
you know. Yeah. I still have not yeah. seen Sharknado. We're going to be uh, doing it on a Friday Night Frights oh. in October as part of the 10th anniversary. So I am both looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to having seen it. Uh, whether it's a pleasurable experience or not remains to be seen. I, I remember seeing Sharknado uh, with my wife when it was like on sci-fi, when it was like the big thing. And it's like, there, it really had this thing of like all this like meta snarky humor that got old for me really fast. And I really, it's like great for them and the filmmakers and everything because they hit upon something and not everybody gets that opportunity, but also all the imitators and stuff that came from it. It's sort of like a catch 22, like respect, but kind of, you know, <laughs> but Hey, I mean, if people like it, that's fine. But the nice yeah, thing I is at least they make some good movies still too. <laughs> I don't want to be critical of or, or seem critical of these guys because I do. I mean, it's the whole thing with like Roger Corman and like you said, Aaron, with H.G. Lewis, they're making money. They're trying to get a product out there that people are going to make money. It's not going to hit the whole wide mainstream audience, but they're going to have their market and they're going to make money and they're going to make it quick. And obviously they are making their money because they continue to make these kind of films. So I, I give them credit. I just don't find those that entertain. Yeah, it's not necessarily so. your yeah, yeah yeah it's not for you yeah but good but good for them for what they're doing and you got to give them credit going okay they're done they cannot come up oh <laughs> santa jaws didn't think of that one okay yeah well that's just it like some of these feel like they ought to be like you know fake trailers at best you yes. know but the idea that you're going to stretch it all the way out into a film but as you say you know like who's you know if you're going to watch it then there you go. Uh, I, I like the fact that they have a really nice array of talking heads. They talk to people like Roger Corman, Joe Dante, mm -hmm. um, Mark Polonia. And then they also have these, you know, kind of experts on the side. And they also just have some people. Oh, well, speaking of experts, we had uh, one of our folks, Vanessa Morgan, who's been on this show. Uh, Vanessa Morgan is one of our talking heads, uh, being the editor of When Animals Attack. And that was shot by our good friend Gert Verbeek as well. Uh, so that was fun. It was fun seeing her pop up and and really lend some some solid uh, critique and and context. Yeah, they had a lot of decent talking heads there. I mean, you had a lot of people involved in the original Jaws, uh, including uh, Peter Benchley's wife. Um, so it, and that's the thing that was really cool. That half of it was a serious documentary. And then they get into the crazy stuff, but yet still took that as a serious right. look at it. Um, and then I love the way that they, like you mentioned, they were jumping around on the timeline. And they also mentioned Last Jaws, which, or Great White, Last Great Jaws. White. I mean, there's a bunch of different titles, which is probably <laughs> the epitome of a Jaws ripoff. Yeah. So much so that they got sued and had to pull it. But they had already made their money by the time it even got pulled. That's amazing. So it, it's... Yeah, if you have not seen The Last Shark or The Great White, it is unbelievably entertaining and how much of a ripoff that, um, oh crap, I can't think of his name now, who plays Quint. Vic, Vic Morrow. Vic Morrow has, a, has an accent that goes in and out with the tide. Sometimes he has it, <laughs> sometimes he doesn't. But the the my favorite part of that is his fate. The line is, instead of this wasn't a boating accident, this wasn't a floating chainsaw. <laughs> Right. I like that they did the kind of side by side scenes, you know, like going oh, yeah. and this scene's the same and this scene's the yep. same. And this scene's the same. <laughs> My favorite part about that movie is when the shark pops out, it looks like it stubbed its toe on the bottom of the ocean. So he's like, ah, <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Just my favorite shark moment in any ripoff. We talked about some of the recent kind of like sci fi channel ones with the kind of CGI sharks, but there's also been some pretty solid uh films that have come out recently that take it a little more seriously i'm thinking like you know 47 meters down open water uh the reef shallows any thoughts on those i i really i loved shallows and i thought uh, bait was really solid as well anybody uh have a, a favorite more recent more serious shark film Bates the one with the supermarket, right? In the supermarket, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one is that one is way better than you think it was going to be. It's a lot yep. of fun. So I highly recommend that one. I never saw Open Waters because I knew the plot, and I wasn't going to put myself through that. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I I'm like 
sitting in the or floating in the water for 90 minutes? Hell no. No, <laughs> no, because there's not going to be any story, any, you know, character that, no, you are in the water waiting to die. Just waiting to I, die. I am not going to put myself through that. <laughs> well, that's another one. I mean, that, it's hard to believe that came out 20 years ago, but uh, it was, it was, uh, I remember seeing that in the theater and going, wow, yeah. like there you're okay. And they, and, and when it ends, you're just like, it reminded me very much. I mean, not just because of the filming style, but of Blair Witch, where you're like, dang, you went yeah. there, you know? If it has a shark or a zombie in it, then I'll watch it. So I'm just waiting on Zombie Shark to come out <laughs> at some point. I've seen most of them. I tend to find something to enjoy in most of them. The Shallows was probably uh, one of the, the better ones. A lot of people like that. I think it's just called Black Demon. But I didn't really like that as much. I mean, you've got the Meg movies, which, oh, sure. um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen those, but there's there's a fine line. For example, you have the Sharknado movies and their extreme silliness, but you know their extreme silliness. And right. the Meg going into the Meg two gets to extreme silliness. But I like to I like to know what environment they're working in, whether it's it's our world, but there's a big problem with sharks. Or it's just a complete fantastical, and you need, you know, a shark exorcist or whatever. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> like that's where it goes wrong. If you're watching a film, the second forty-seven meters down film, I think oh. had had blind sharks or a blind shark, and yeah. I'm sitting watching it thinking, I'm pretty sure sharks don't really use their eyes as much as their other senses. <laughs> I'm not a marine biologist, but that was enough to take me out of that movie because of that silliness and the plotting compared to you know the sort of simple thrills of the first movie the director and whomever else letting you know what kind of film you're you're in for you know if we're supposed to take this seriously then you need to kind of play by those rules of the world and if you're doing something that's crazy we want to know that right off the bat and be like okay it, you know i don't have to think about this at all i can just go along for the ride i remember seeing clips of ghost shark <laughs> like when the shark comes out, like somebody's glass of water. I'm like, okay, got it. <laughs> this yeah. is this is the world we're in, where anything that's water, you're you're in trouble. Usually, the title is going to give you a pretty good. I mean, if you're popping in Santa Jaws or Shark Exorcist and go, oh, this is going to be a serious. You know, I wonder if George Clooney's in this. You're not gonna. You're gonna get that right away. But I, I think some of the other ones do a, the lower budget, like. Uh, 47 meters down the first one mm -hmm. um do play up the suspense element of it because i think that's where it can be a very effective film not necessarily the tax which can be terrifying but it's always that that lead in which is why i think open waters would work so well yeah. because it is that anticipation of what may happen and i mean growing up in the 70s once jaws came out if you went in the water, you were going to get eaten by a shark. And if you stayed on land, you were going down in quicksand. So <laughs> you had no place to go in the 70s. It was going to be one of those two. Uh, I, you I, know I, what? I, I have to say, I'm really kind of... Uh, it's it's funny that there are different levels to the shark movies now. And there's a lot of... like I like how they had uh, James Nunn uh, in this to talk about movies. Because he's a like a lower budget like a two, $3 million kind of movie director that does really good work for the, the limited budget. And they only have a little bit of stuff that they can work with. And to make right. them look as good as they do um, is very impressive, especially when producers, uh, international producers have this thing like, well, we got to pump out shark movies. Like the, the fact that, that they find the, these guys that can make pretty solid movies on such a low budget um, is really impressive i think well and i'm sure nobody got into filmmaking to become you know like a shark film <laughs> you know factory but you know if that's what you end up doing and it allows you to keep doing you know doing working as an as a director then you know more power to you uh we haven't talked about deep blue sea which is absolutely one of my favorite uh shark movies <laughs> I, I did love how like they were like just so you know sharks do get cancer in case yeah. anybody was wondering, I was like, I actually never thought about the fact that sharks get cancer, but okay. You know, I didn't, I, I, I like that. And I like the fact that we're getting 
some science, you know, uh, on, yes, they actually don't get Alzheimer's, which is, again, hadn't really thought about sharks getting Alzheimer's, but I mean, I'm glad they don't. <laughs> that is true. I, I love that movie, though. I remember seeing it in theaters, yep. not knowing about the Samuel L. Jackson scene. Yeah. And that, that was one of my greatest movie theater moments ever because me and my friend looked at each other and we just had that smile on our <laughs> face. And it was, oh man, I, I love when a movie can surprise you like that. Uh, so fun. For sure. Yeah, I, I saw that in the theater when it came out and really, really enjoyed it. Um, seeing it a few times later, I noticed the CGI sharks a little bit more, but I still <laughs> like it. I mean, again, it's like those movies in the 50s. You can just make up whatever science you want. Nobody's going to go, hey, wait a minute, that's not right. accurate. But it's a, it's a fun story. I will say the one thing that, and I know this is a movie and I know it's a shark movies, but a lot of times it's like, no, if a shark grabs a hold of you, most of the time it's, if it does let go, it's taking something with it and you are <laughs> not going to survive. Yeah. And so many times as in deep blue sea with uh, LL Cool J survives when clearly he should, if, even if he got let go, he would have bled out immediately and I know in the 47 meters below or the second one, someone gets munched on and then they survive and you're going, no, no. <laughs> so that, that is one nitpick thing that I have going. I want a little bit of reality or a sense of realism, but uh, for the most part, I, I thought I liked the idea of what deep blue sea was trying to do. For sure. And I think, I mean, I think you could say that about almost any horror movie <laughs> where somebody gets, cut or hacked or shot or it's like um i don't i don't know that you're gonna make it through to the uh the closing credits there my friend I, I, speaking of mario van peebles gets killed and in some versions he's alive and i don't know what it's the theatrical version is he alive in the theatrical or is i'm pretty sure he died in the theatrical version but yeah but people didn't like that so when they released it to video i believe he then okay. survived because i remember when it's amazing when i run into something that's like a scene I didn't know existed and they changed it. It, it blows my mind every time. I, I'm a, such an easy mark for that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I I will say, speaking of Mario Van Peebles, I was intrigued by, uh, I, I remember hearing USS Indianapolis, the movie coming out and going, oh, that's right. I forgot that even came out, but I'm I'm interested to maybe go check that out because he, he directed it. And I mean, Nicolas Cage, you know, uh, it looks like he's, not going full cage in that one, so <laughs> for better or for worse. I have seen that one. It's it's just I mean it's there. Is it's it just not, a kind of like a drama with sharks? Uh, yeah, yeah, just not that memorable. But you're right. I mean, cage doesn't go full cage, so that's a bonus for the the material that they're working with. It was <laughs> it was quite decent, but you kind of sit there just thinking. I could put on Quint's speech again and, and really <laughs> enjoy something for a few minutes, you know? Yeah. It's pretty bad if that's more entertaining that's yeah. that five-minute dialogue than a 90-minute movie. Was there a character named Quint in it? Did they try to be cute and be like, hey, this is uh, Quint over here, and then you never I, see him again? I can't recall if they made that little, <laughs> little nod. All right. Well, hey, any any final thoughts on shark exploitation? the documentary, now streaming on Shudder? Worth seeing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm also though, uh, because it's been mentioned repeatedly, I'm just going to say nobody rush out for it, but Santa Jaws is quite good. <laughs> Santa quite, Jaws? It's quite funny and it knows it's trying to be funny. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going okay. to like, plant that. That'll be my Christmas house. watch this year. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we'll just circle back around. See what I did there? We'll circle back around and have you on, Kevin, and be like, okay, explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are like vanish. You've ruined the holiday for me, Kevin. Here's a rock. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Again, this is Scarathon 2023, benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. Uh, the link to donate is below in the comments. And uh, looking forward to the rest of October. Thanks, everybody. Until Thank next you. time, keep searching, keep exploring, and keep sharing the scare. <laughs> <laughs>